The next factoring method that we're going to learn is factoring trinomial. Our trinomial will, will be of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Now we will have two cases here. The first case is if your a is equal to 1, which will become x squared plus bx plus c. And the second case is that your a is not equal to 1. First, let's discuss first procedure on how to factor a given trinomial if a is equal to 1. So you will have x squared plus bx plus c. Your goal here is to get factors of c, two numbers, two factors of c, so that when you add these two factors, the sum will be equal to your b. So here's an example. So the answer here is x plus 2 and x plus 4. Note that the factors of 8, 2, and 4 will give you a sum of 6. 2 plus 4 is equal to 6. So once you have these two numbers, then you'll be able to find the factors, which is x plus 2 and x plus 4. Okay, so here's our first example. First step that you have to do, check if you have a GCF. In this case, there's no GCF. So there's no... Now let's find the factors of 12. And once we list all the factors of 12, we are going to get two factors that will give us a sum of the middle term, which is 7. So what are the factors of 12? The factors of 12 that we are going to consider will be both positives. Both positives because whenever the middle term is positive, we are going to only consider positive factors of 12. So the rule is, whenever c is positive, you have to check the sign of the middle term because whatever the sign of the middle term is, that will be the sign of the factors of your c. So c is positive. Now, let's say b is positive then all the factors that you're going to consider for C will be both positive. On the other hand, if C is positive, check the middle term. And if the middle term is negative, then the sign of the factors that you're going to consider for C will be negative. Here's an example. The C is positive, so to identify the signs of the factors of C that we're going to use, we have to check the middle term. Since the middle term is positive, the sign of the factors of 24 should be all positive. So this is an example. Now, now what if you have x squared minus 7x plus 10? So since our C is positive, we have to check the sign of the middle term. Now, the middle term here is negative, so when we get all the factors of 10, we have to consider both negatives. We can also have negative 5 and negative 2, okay? So do not include 5 and 2 because 5 and 2 are both positive. We have to consider only both uh, negative factors. So we'll have 1 and 12. We can also have 2 and 6. And then we can have 4 and 3. Now, if you add 1 and 12, you are not going to get 7. If you add 2 and 6, we cannot get 7. Now, if you add 4 and 3, we'll be able to get 7. So this will be the factors of 12 that we are going to use. So the factors of 12 that we're going to use will be 4 and 3. When you add 4 and 3 together, you're going to get the middle term. 7. So to factor this, it will be quantity times quantity. You will have x plus 4 times x plus 3. So this will be the factors of x squared plus 7x plus 12. Alright, now, of course, don't forget to check your answer. To check your answer, we are going to use um, the FOIL method. So FOIL method, f means first, outer, inner, and then last. So first means x times x. So right now we are checking our answer. x times x will give us x squared. Outer will be x times 3. That will give us 3x. 
inner will be 4 times x that will give us 4x and then last will be 4 times 3 which will give us 12. So if you combine like terms, we'll get x squared plus 7x plus 12 which gave us the original problem. So we are confident that our answer x plus 4 times x plus 3 is correct. Alright, example number 2. Again, first check if we have a GCF. Alright, there's no GCF here. Now we need to get factors of 5y squared that will give us a sum of 6y. Note that the x variable here is the one raised to 2. So the middle term here looks like 6y x. 5y squared here, then x squared. So we need to get the factors of 5y squared. The sum should be equal to 6y. So let's try to list all the factors of, of 5y squared. Again, before we get the factors, we have to consider the sign of the middle term. If this is positive, if this is positive, we have to follow the sign of the middle term. Okay? So the middle term is positive, so the factors that we're going to consider will be two positives. Uh, we can have only 1y and then 5y. I think these are the only two factors that we can have for 5y squared because 5 is a prime number. Now, if you add 1y and 5y, can we get 6y? Yes, we can. Therefore, 1y and 5y will be the correct combination that we are going to uh, use. So, the factors of 5y squared will be 1y and then 5y. And when you add these two together, you are, going to, you are going to get the middle term 6y. Therefore, our factors will be x plus y times x plus 5y. Now, remember, we can also use x plus 5y times x plus y. So either answers will be correct because of the commutative pr property. Alright, let's do number 3. Example number 3. For example number 3, the, the last term is positive, so we have to consider the sign of the middle term. Since the middle term is negative, the factors that we are going to consider will be negative numbers. So factors of 12 that are negatives, the sum should give us a negative 8. So what are the uh, negative factors of 12? We can have negative 1 and negative 12. When you multiply this, you're going to get positive 12, but when you add, you are not going to get negative 8. Let's find another factors, negative 4 and negative 3. Multiply these two together, you get 12. But if you add, we are not going to get negative 8 because the sum of these two is equal to negative 7. Let's try negative 6 and negative 2. Now, negative 6 times negative 2 is positive 12. If you add these two factors together, can we get negative 8? Yes, we can. Therefore, this will be the combination that we need. Alright, so the factors of 12, it should be two negatives because the middle term is negative. Negative 6 and negative 2. And when you add these two together, you are going to get a negative 8. So your answer will be x minus 6, x minus 2. Let's do example number 4. For example number 4, do we have any GCF? It seems like we can find a common factor here, which is 3. So we'll get W squared here, minus 5W plus 4. Okay, so we have a GCF. So our goal now is to factor W squared minus 5W plus 4. Now before we get the factors of 4, since this one is positive, we have to consider the sign of the middle term. Now since the middle term is negative, the factors of 4 that we are going to consider will be both negatives. So what are the factors of 4 that are uh, both negatives? We can have negative 2 and negative 2. So negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, but we need to get a sum of negative 5. When you add these two together, you are going to get a negative 4. This is not what we need. What are the other factors of 4 that are both negative? We can have negative 4 and negative 1. So negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. Now is the sum of these two numbers equal to negative 5? 
Yes, it is. It is equal to negative 5. Therefore, this will be the combination that we need. So the factors of 4 that will give us a sum of negative 5 is negative 4 and negative 1. When you add these two together, you're going to get a negative 5. So your complete factors will be W minus 4, W minus 1. Alright, we are going to skip number 5.